Today I'm going to go over 5 reasons why your program drums suck. I've listened to a lot of demos, I've watched a lot of guitar playthroughs that have boring drums. Boring drums actually plague your song to make them sound bad. So I'm going to go over 5 mistakes that I hear, very simple fixes, and then at the end I'm going to go over a little bonus tip to really help push your guitar songs to the next level. So mistake number 1 that I hear all the time is that a part should start with 2 cymbals. I always hear a song or a part starting with 1 versus what a difference it takes all of the interest just being on your right ear and the fatigue of just constantly having something on one ear and just adds the accents this is such an important part because it lets me know where the one of the beat is super simple first step instantly brings interest and instantly brings me into the song so number two, again to do with cymbals, I hear this all the time. Super boring and it doesn't really bring any interest, it doesn't bring any impact and it doesn't like throw the listener off in a good way. By adding accent cymbals, it lets me know what you as a songwriter find important in the riff. So basically I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna find the sections of the guitar that I think need a little bit more of an impact. So instantly right there. And then again right here. And then maybe again here, but you can't have two cymbals and a snare at the same time, so I'll remove the normal one. I always go from the beginning and just find where you're like, okay, that needs a little accent. And then just like make sure you're not using the same cymbal all the time. So instantly adds so much more interest and it catches me off guard by just being like, oh sh it's not like the same thing over and over again. A recent study I saw, there's something crazy like 60,000 songs being uploaded a day to Spotify. By doing the bare minimum, it's not gonna make your music stand out. It's gonna make somebody listen to it once and forget about it or just like not even listen to the whole thing. So mistake number three that I hear all the time in guitar based music, the snare is almost always in the most basic and most expected section. So right here, it's on the three every time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can do that with a groove, obviously, like a breakdown or something like that. But with a riff like this, if I'm treating it as an intro, I want somebody to be interested right away. This is kind of not interesting. I'm going to go through and put the snare in different placements. So let's check that out. So right away, instead of the snare being there, I'm going to move that. there that, okay. and then switch again just constantly changing it up making it interesting again maybe I'll keep that one there And then you can see by doing the interesting one right away, going into the groove as a second rotation is instantly way more impactful. Cool, so now that we have the snare dialed in and they're in different sections, I'm noticing that the cymbals could be a little bit more interesting as well. And right now they're basically on the quarter notes all the time. But let's dial them in and let's accent them a little bit better. I'm just going to alternate. Dun, dun, dang. That's, a, that's cool already. Let's try to syncopate the cymbals a little bit more with the rest of the beat. And same thing. Bump. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Probably that. Put a hi-hat instead. And then again, like introducing different symbols makes it a lot more interesting as well. Just by making those few changes and syncopating the symbols with the rest of the beat, we're getting a lot more interest out of the part and it makes for a way more interesting intro. As we all know, if somebody's not into the intro, they'll skip. They'll just skip the song, they'll skip the video, they'll skip whatever it is. You have to grab them right away by doing something super cool like that. 
very easy. None of this is like difficult. It's literally just drawing in notes. So mistake number five that I hear all the time is that there's no toms throughout the riff. And if there are toms in there, it's basically just to be a fill at the end of a guitar part. As guitar players, we have six strings, seven strings, eight strings. We have that many strings for a reason, just like a drum kit has that many pieces for a reason. So by only playing the bare minimum on the kick, snare, and cymbals, it's basically just playing only the top string on a guitar. So let's throw some toms throughout the riff. So I'm hearing like a little fill over here, something over here. And I'm just gonna throw basic toms that I hear and see what it does. Let's try that. Maybe that. Let's try that. That's sick as hell. And honestly, it was just one little fill in the middle of the riff instead of being a fill at the end. We can also throw toms. Let's see where else we can put them. Doesn't need it there, but you get the point. Just throwing in toms in different sections instantly made the intro way more interesting. So the next mistake that I hear all the time and when I'm mixing bands and when I get sent MIDI and they're like, can you fix the drums up a bit? This is a mistake that I hear a lot. When there's a buildup, the beginning of the buildup doesn't have an intro note. Just by adding a kick or a kick and cymbal or a kick and toms will just make the listener way more like interested once that buildup starts. So you see what I mean right here? Right now there's nothing on it. And then by adding a kick and say toms or something, lets you know, here's the beginning of the next part. And it doesn't sound as empty as it did when it was just a guitar. Or even adding like a little double kick right before that happens. It was that simple, two moves. Another bonus tip that we can try, having the floor tom or a tom lead will give you a completely different kind of groove or a completely different kind of feel. So let's try, instead of like using this open groove, let's try putting it on a tom and just see what that does. This is how you make your music way more interesting. All of this took me a total of like 22 minutes to explain it and do it. If I was just doing this, usually when I'm doing writing music and doing this kind of stuff on the fly, it takes about like two to five minutes to take a boring riff, a stock guitar and drum part, and just make my guitar parts sound way better by making the drum parts way more interesting. If you enjoyed this video and found any use in it, please make sure to like and comment and subscribe as I'll be posting more of this kind of stuff all the time. If you wanna learn more about drum programming and processing, check out one of these videos down here. Thank you so much, I'll see you next time. See ya.